Um, talk to me about coming back and anchoring a line that could not, that could possibly be one of the best in the SEC, but one of the best in the country. I mean, you guys are getting so much publicity and that decision, what went into that to come back? Uh, I mean, definitely like I said before, um, my dad's always told me not to, to always finish everything you started. And I mean, you know, having certain worries about how long it would have took me to obtain my degree if I had left and then came back and how many springs that would look like. I mean, I decided and just wholeheartedly decided that it was better for me to finish my degree now. And I mean, you know, I want to set the standard for my son growing up that, you know, education is what's going to happen. It's not an option. Okay, back to How has fatherhood made you a better football player? Uh, I mean, I think I absolutely love it. I mean, I know that football hopefully will be my career, so mm -hmm. it's a lot more important. And I mean, every little detail now becomes so much more important because now I'm the provider for somebody else's livelihood. And my son, day in and day out, I mean, he can't do it for himself. So, I mean, that's my job, so that's what I'm going to do. But, um, last question. This is an opportunity, Media Days, is to, to get a message out there, to make a statement. What do you wish college football fans knew about being an athlete that maybe they don't know, judging from comments on social media or television or magazines or those things? What do you wish people knew that they did not know, what they obviously don't know about being an athlete? I mean, it's just a lot of work day in and day out. And, uh you know, we show up to the facility every single day and put in a lot of work. And I mean, you know, they see the final, the final production on Saturday, but I mean, throughout the week, it's a lot that goes on throughout the week in order for us to get to that point. Second row. Caroline Grace, WAFF out of Huntsville, Alabama. You're hosting Alabama and Georgia this year. Can you talk about the impact that the atmosphere in Jordan Hare has on both, the, both of those games and not only those games, but every home game? Uh, I mean, I, I'll say it time and time again, I believe we got the best fans in college football. So, I mean, they're definitely there riding behind us every single Saturday. But, I mean, you know the Georgia game and the Alabama game, those are big rivalry games for us. And, I mean, it's loud. It's really loud. And, uh, I mean, I just think we kind of feed off our crowd. So, I mean, going forward, it's been very beneficial to, for us to have our crowd there behind us. To your right against the wall. Michael Brad from Saturday Down South. You guys are bringing back a lot of offensive linemen, basically all the starters from last year, but they struggled a little bit. So what or how have you seen them progress through the spring and this summer? Uh, I mean, definitely just being able to get more experience. I mean, man, for you to sit there and say that people are going into their first year of playing should be out there and be great. I mean, yeah, you can say that, but we all know that's not realistic. So, I mean, going forward, I mean, just being able to practice with these guys in the spring and just see how, much they, how far they came along, I mean, wholeheartedly believe in iron sharp as iron. So, I mean, going through the spring, those guys definitely, I mean, were making us better, and we hope to have made them better in the spring as well. To your left here, second row. Derek, week in and week out, you guys are playing in college football stadiums, but you'll open the year in an NFL stadium uh, bigger than a lot of the college stadiums that you play in. Uh, how excited are you to get to play at at t Stadium, and uh, what are you looking out of this uh, Oregon matchup? I mean, I'm very excited to go out to Jerry's World and play and uh, just kind of see it. And uh, I mean, the first matchup, I mean, you know, they say that the offensive line, you know, right now is the number one offensive line. So, you know, we're getting a lot of high praise too. But I mean, we're working. And, you know, the biggest challenge for us is to be able to go out game week. And, you know, our coach always says, kind of just be where your feet are. And I mean, lucky for us, we get to not have to worry about playing against other offensive lines throughout the season on the back end. And all we got to do right now is worry about playing Oregon first. Second row here. Derek, do you guys have defined expectations as a team this year? And if so, what are they? I mean, SEC championship, being able to compete for an SEC championship, and then being able to compete for a national championship. For anybody to sit here and tell you all that they, that they don't want to go to a national championship or they don't want to go to the SEC championship, and I, no, they're lying. And I mean, you know, every week guys come in every single week. They're not coming in hoping to play in this game or that game at the end of the year. Everybody wants to be in that four game playoff. So, I mean, I think that's the goal. And I think that's the goal for every college football team in the country. To your left, back to Kelly. Derek, Stephen Gunner, WSFA Montgomery. A guy who's here with you, Marlon Davidson. How do you guys practice along with each other? How do you push each other? And 
how much do you guys try to push each other every day at practice and, and what you want to see from each other on Saturdays? Uh, I mean, definitely, uh, you know, I look at those like Nick, Marlon, you know, all my defensive line guys. I mean, those are my brothers. I mean, you know, every single day, I mean, we got to go through with Coach G. So when we get out on the field, I mean, it's kind of like I'm going to war with my brothers. So I know, you know, we all been taught the same way. So I know day in and day out when we get a guy in the field and they may be 114 degrees and we all out there sucking wind that, you know, all right, like everybody knows, like we got each other's back. So we're not finna give up on one another. Third row, right here in the middle. Uh, Derek, Jamal Kennedy, WSFA in Montgomery. You guys return a lot of experience on that defensive side of the ball, and especially on that D-line. How much fun is it playing on that side of the ball with those guys, knowing that you guys are coming back together and going into this year? Uh, I mean, a lot of fun. I mean, a lot of those guys I came in with, so I mean, uh, definitely a lot of fun. So I, on Saturday, I mean, it's just kind of like we, we love celebrating everybody. So when big plays happen, it's not, man, we get to the sideline. It's not, oh, man, I didn't have any tackles today or I didn't get a sack today. But, like, it's talking about, like, what Daniel Thomas did, Jeremiah Denson did, Nick Cole, K.J. Britt, Javaris Davis, those guys, what they did. And, I mean, you get to go to the media and they say, like, how do you all balance? How do you all balance, like, other people making big plays? Well, I mean, everybody's goal is to win. So, I mean, if you putting yourself before the team, then, I mean, I don't think that's right in any way. Front row right here. Uh, Derek, Drew DeArmond, WZZN Radio, Huntsville, Alabama. As far as when you were making your decision to come back for your final year, how big uh, a factor was it that you get a chance to play with your brother at Auburn? Uh, I mean, it was a big factor. I mean, I, uh, actually, I actually got to play uh, one snap of my senior night when I was in high school with my little brother, and he ended up making the tackle, and that's something that, you know, I'll, end up, I'll uh, forever remember. And, uh, I mean, I'm just kind of excited for that moment to be able to come up this fall. Again, here in the front row. Yeah, D. Brown. Uh, tell me what you like and admire about Marlon as a player. You've played with him for a long time now. Uh, I mean, a lot of y'all men I know, but like Marlon, he got serious, like, anger issues. So, I mean, I, I think it's funny to get him going, like, before the game and then, like, you know, just by like, messing by, man, I know you're not going to get it. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I was like, why are you trying? You're not even going to get no sack today. And then like, he gets mad, and I'm like, yeah, there we go. And, <laughs> and then I'm just like, I don't have to deal with it, so I can do whatever I want and get him as frustrated as I want to. Any other questions? We have a good talker here, right here in the front, sure. Derek, what have we seen of the young guys, especially at tackle? Uh, Con is coming up, Truesdale, uh, Daquan, some of those guys. What have you seen out of them this summer as they get ready to, to try to take over uh, or, or fill in for what Dontavious was? Uh, I mean, Connors and Red are uh, out, so I mean, we expect both of them to be back, hopefully by fall camp, so I mean, just for the young guys, I mean, Truesdale, Connors, and uh, Red, I mean, or Daquan, uh, it's just been like they all, everybody wants to play, so I mean, it's, competition level is high, and you know, all, all they did all spring was compete, 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 and I mean, like, just being able to see that, and you know, People always have questions about, like, how do you replace a Don? Well, I mean, it's college football, so, I mean, people are going to leave college football every year, and then other people come in. So, I mean, now it's time for somebody to step up. Get back here to your left. Derek, I'm sure you've been asked it somewhere along the line the last few months, but other side of the ball, what are you seeing in the quarterbacks and their competition and since it's been dwindled down to between the two guys? Uh, I mean, I think I, I don't ever get to see, like, what y'all see and what y'all make uh, – the ideas off of because I mean like yeah I'm playing against them practicing against them but I don't ever get to like you know go break down film against them or whatever but I mean I'm both guys are cool guys as me so I mean whichever one we're gonna be behind full we got full support okay back here again to your right uh, the commissioner talked earlier in the week about the importance of destigmatizing mental health. Um, you're a leader on your football team. Um, what would you say to, as a leader, um, for your football team and for football players across the country about the importance of um, it not being seen as weak or seeing, uh, being seen as not masculine or not strong or attractive um, when, when one person or anybody struggles um, in the mental health area? Uh, I mean, I think, and I think about this, and I. Well, I had the mission, uh, the meeting in the summer with the commissioner where he was talking about them, emphasizing that. And um, it, it just is so important to me that like guys realize like going to go seek help or going to go talk to somebody, I mean, that, that shows no weakness whatsoever. It shows you even more of a man to be able to address those problems rather than hold those things in day in and day out. Because I mean, 
with the football, school, and with everything else going on in guys' lives, you don't know exactly who all is going through what in the locker room. And I mean, even if a tragedy strikes, I mean, you got to think guys playing football with, you know, maybe a loved one had passed away on the week, during the week. I mean, that stuff that weighs heavy on your heart. And, you know, you got to be able to lean on your brothers, if anything, and your coaches and be able to speak out and talk to them. To your left here, by the camera. Garrett Matthew, I be EAC. The level behind you, the linebacking core, is one that lost some guys, but also some guys are coming back, including KJ Brick. Can you talk about him and some of the things that you've seen from his development? I uh, mean, a lot of people sit here and say that the linebackers, yeah, we lost three senior linebackers last year, but I mean, you got to think, KJ has been behind them for two years now. So, I mean, he's learning just like they have. And um, coming in as a freshman, you know, everybody's you know, new, I say it's new, because I mean, you just got to start off with the pup, is what they call it. And uh, I mean, I just think he's been, he's doing a good job. I mean, he's had Deshaun there for two years to ask questions, so now it's time for him to step up and take over that role as playing the mic. Back here by the camera, Bank. Um, how important is it for you to uh, show up and perform in week one versus Oregon? How important is it for you to like show up and perform in week one? Uh, I mean, I think we can, uh, I think all I can do is go out and give my best effort. I mean, if if things are there for us, I mean, it's, it's there for us. But I mean, I think going forward uh, as a team, I think that, you know, it's important for us to get off to a good start to the year. I mean, because that sets the tone for the year. I mean, nobody wants to go out there and be all one and then, because we play in week zero and then you got that next week off. So nobody wants that taste in their mouth. So, I mean, I think just going out and getting off to a good start against them is going to be very beneficial to us. Two final questions. First, over here. To Derek, your uh, obviously that schedule, once again, is one of the toughest in, in college football. But when you look down at the last, two, uh, last three games, you have Georgia at home and Alabama at home. Instead of going on the road for both of those like last year, does that bring a sense of relief that you get to play at a Jordan Heron, especially your senior year? Yeah, I mean, like I said, we got the best fans in the country. So having those having our fans there and having and being at home, I mean, you give us an advantage right there in that situation. So I mean, I think, you know, we just gotta prepare and be mentally prepared for those games because I mean those are two games, uh, just two huge games. They're different than any other. Final question, third row on your right. Uh, Derek, how are you handling the uh, preseason hype? Uh, this defensive line is seen as one of the best in the SEC. Uh, I mean, I think that, you know, we see it. You know, it pops up on social media and stuff. But I mean, if you feed into it now, I mean, you gotta you gotta work. Even if they're saying you are number one, I mean, you gotta still have that blue collar mentality because I mean, if you're number one, there's only one way to go. I mean, going down. So I mean, you gotta look at it like you're at the bottom and you gotta try to progress every week. This video was brought to you by the Alabama Department of Labor. Visit your local career center today to learn about our on-the-job training program for employees and employers.